Hey, what's up? How you doing today? I'm going to show you how to fix this Dremel tool. This is a Dremel Multi-Pro model 395. It's supposed to be 5,000 to 35,000 RPM. That's pretty fast. So, a lot of these things are, are very similar. And I'm going to show you. My dad uses these on his wood carvings. I'll show you these ones he's got over here. He's had all three of these for quite a while. We got Black and Decker, which is made in China. Brand X, I'm sure, is made in China too. And uh, name brand Dremel, that's probably made in China as well. Um, but they all have screws in the back side. You all start off. All of them have type of collar this one's a little different because it's got that locking spindle lock there but it's still got that silver collar there this one has six seven screws holding it together so it's a little bit different quite a bit different this one has four phillips holding it on and this one has four torques that hold it on so anyway just for reference so you start out <coughs> By uh, you take this metal hanger off, just bends, bend it, and springs back. And you take this black plastic collar off the top, the end. Then you'll need a T15 Torx bit or star, whatever you want to call it. You'll pop those four screws out of there. Then, uh, let's see, yeah, you'll gently gently lift it up out of that housing there it's got a piece of rubber there and I think it had a piece of rubber there I cut a, a scrap another scrap piece and glued it in maybe to help with I guess vibration and help it hold together and stay snug but um, watch out for this uh, little spring here that's part of the spindle lock that'll fall out if you're not careful but then you can make sure it's unplugged, of course, always, safety first. And then you can twist these wires at, out gently and remember where they go. I think that's important. It is, it is a polarized cord. Then you'll need a uh, small pocket clip type screwdriver. And you can take these blue uh, covers for the brushes out. So what was wrong with this one is one of the brushes was seized up in there, stuck for some reason. I don't know if it overheated or what, and the spring was totally gone. So anyway, you can take those out and uh, inspect them, see what kind of shape they're in. These were in, one of them was still in good shape, the one that wasn't stuck. So um, I'll show you what it looks like. They look like this see that all right yeah so I'll, 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 I'll pull this one part of the way out so you can see like that and that one comes in and out real easy that's the way it should be I don't know what happened with the other side if it got hot or what but you'll take your uh, pocket clip screwdriver and you can gently pry this in plastic end cap on it just snaps off then you got to be careful Whoop, there's a rubber a little rubber cover goes over that bearing I guess that helps with vibration keep vibration down this switch is really fragile you got to be careful with it and this cover prevents it from moving too far so try to keep it in that range position but that will probably fall apart on you and that's okay you can put it back together it's got a, a, a very fragile part underneath the blue that has to stay in place I put a drop or two of glue up and underneath there to help it stay in place where it connects with this blue plastic this piece of black plastic underneath and it's got the contacts for the I guess the uh, rheostat type switch variable switch if you want you can take the whole then you can take the whole spindle out which i did and cleaned and then polished the commutator i don't know if you can tell it but it's it still looks pretty clean down in there what little i can see 
But uh, that's about it. I put uh, just a few drops of glue. I put <laughs> glue, yeah. A few drops of three and one oil just on the bearings on each end. Doesn't take much at all. I tried to put a little bit of uh, anise up in this bearing. I guess I got a little bit up in there, but it was with a toothbrush. It was hard to get up in there. So if you don't have any, get some. It it work. It's really good for rusty nuts and bolts. Not so much on projects like this, but um, then just reverse order. Put it back together. Be careful. The uh, brushes are brittle. Be very careful with them. And uh, once, you, if you if you fool with po cleaning and polishing the commutator, where the brush is contacted, the copper the part, you can put a very 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 light coat of this on there. But don't get carried away. It'll cause more harm than good. I think. But even before I turned it on, I made sure and twisted this several times by hand just to kind of help, hopefully help get rid of any, any little excess. But um, that's good stuff. It's high temperature and it's supposed to help prevent corrosion or oxidation, <clears throat> which there's going to be oxidation if there's any arcing on those brushes and all. So, <clears throat> but yeah. I also put a very, very, again, a very, very light coat of, you can clean the end of these if they're still good, if you're reusing them, with some rubbing alcohol or some electronic cleaner and a very clean paper towel. But uh, I also put a very, very light coat of this stuff uh, that I use, this OxGuard electrical grease. But uh, you gotta, and still, I made sure I twisted this by hand several times to help wipe off any little bit of excess but just reverse order you'll put these covers back on with the little flathead pocket clip screwdriver it's got to be a real small one because look how small that is so anyway that's about it good luck have fun hope it works out for you and let's see what's playing on my jukebox here <laughs> 